streaming live via the internet, welcome to ISP Radio, your weekly source for ISP-related news, events, and interviews with industry experts. If you deliver internet via fiber optic, fixed wireless, coax, or any other way, you're in the right place. And now a brief word from our sponsors. Link Technologies Incorporated provides the lowest priced Microtech products in North America, as well as Wade Towers, Mimosa, Cambium, Ubiquity, Nettonix, and a host of other products and services to be your one-stop shop for your ISP needs. Visit www.linktext.net. That's L-I-N-K-T-E-C-H-S dot net for more information. TowerCoverage.com, providing online RF coverage maps with website integration. Stop rolling your trucks for every site survey and start doing installations. Visit www.towercoverage.com now. And now we'd like to present our hosts, Steve Grabiel and Dennis Burgess. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of ISP Radio. As you can tell, this is a interesting format one that uh, we're going to be doing quite often. Uh, basically, we're going to start doing our little audio broadcasts. Instead of doing the big video production and all that kind of good stuff, we're going to start doing these little audio broadcasts, and hopefully everybody enjoys them. So today we're going to be talking about Microtech a little bit. Uh, we have the Microtech Powerline APs and the Microtech Powerlines. Now these are kind of interesting devices. Uh, we're going to be talking about them as per t as uh, how they actually work. And uh, if you go to routerboard.com, you can actually see the Powerline products. And these are really nifty uh, uh uh, it's called data over power line. So there's the power line uh, US and of course an EU version. And then there's a power line AP. And then there's a power line Pro. Ooh, ah. Well, the big thing that most people need to realize is the power line US, the, the standard power line, it has a uh, Type A micro USB plug on it. That's it. There's no access point, there's no Ethernet jack. It just has that micro USB port. That may be perfectly fine for people who have devices uh, such as like the HAP AC squared, devices that are powered by the micro USB. So if you have a device that can be powered via the micro USB uh, or it has a micro USB uh, port on it, you can go ahead, take a power line, uh, plug it in, and upgrade the firmware on that device, and magically you will get a power line interface. Yeah, that's basically how it works. It's, it's very, very simple, very basic, um, but you get that interface, and magically any device that's powered or has a micro USB can use the power line. For 29 bucks, you add an interface, and now you have a power line interface. Uh, we also have the Powerline AP, and this is what most people are probably going to be using. Um, we, we do stock both, so it's kind of up to you on what you want. But most people, uh, all, the, all the, the deployments that we've done uh, so far, at least that we've helped with, has been primarily with the Powerline APs. Now the APs, um, Microtech in their infinite wisdom, I'm going to pick on Microtech a little bit because uh, it's easy to do. Um, they made these Powerline APs. And they just have uh, BGN, so it just has 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi in it. Uh, I would love to see a Powerline Pro AP or something like that. Something that is basically a WAP AC. So it has 5 gigahertz and 2.4 and has the Powerline interface. You just plug it in and it magically works. Uh, if it has an Ethernet port on it, that would even be a better plus. But the Powerline AP, it has 2.4 gig and it has a Ethernet interface. So typically, when we're looking at the Powerline products, um, you're typically going to use a Powerline AP to feed the network. So it's just like any other wireless network. Uh, we have a controller, and that's basically kind of like an access point, and then we have stations. Now currently, I, I think it's either 8 or 16 uh, stations are max. Uh, in the network, but uh, it's usually more than enough for what most people want to use them for. 
So uh, with the Powerline APs, what we get is we get uh, that Ethernet port, and most of the time what we'll do is we'll uh, bring a Internet connection in, and we'll just run an Ethernet cable from our router, so let's say a 4011. We run an Ethernet cable from our Powerline AP, plug it in, and now we have a hardwired Ethernet in. Now, there are several things about the power lines that you need to be aware of. Um, so one, they have a sync button. And the sync button is great if you have two units. Basically, you hit the sync button on both units, and uh, within 120 seconds, they sync up together. Sounds great. That works excellent if you have two units, and that's it. But right now, if you need to add any of the additional eight that you can have, uh, you need to actually open up the power line, win box into them, and there is two options. One is a network password, and the other option is a network key. If you type a network password, it will generate the network key, or you can just simply use an auto-generated uh, network key. If you wish, you have a feature uh, that basically says, uh, is, it all, is it auto? Is it always or never? And uh, I'm going to have to look up exactly what that feature is, because I, I got it right here. I just need to uh, to look it up. Um, but the, the difference is, is if it's always, that means it's always going to be the controller. If it's never, that means it's always going to be a station. Okay, so it never is the controller. Therefore, it is, simply put, a station. Um and the big thing that you have to, to make sure you do whenever you set these up. So if you have, let's say you have one controller that's going to be plugged into Ethernet, and then you have two or three access points you want out there with Ethernet cables, you need to go ahead and configure them. Uh, you need to set the uh, either network password or network key. Note the network password will generate a network key, so you can just use the network key. And then we have this PLC CCO selection mode, and that's the power line device mode. Um, normally, it's going to be an auto, but you need to either set uh, specifically the one that goes into that 4011, the, the one where the internet feed, it typically needs to be always, because it's always going to be acting as the, quote, central controller or master device. And then all the rest of them, you're just going to set that mode to never, because it's going to be a slave device. It's going to be a station. So, with that said, that is the simplest way of using these. We've deployed uh, quite a few home networks, uh, helping people uh, connect their, uh, their homes and businesses as well. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, there is also this Powerline Pro unit. Um, the Pro unit is basically the same thing, with the exception that we actually have uh, higher speeds. So... Uh, usually, all the Powerline units are capped at 100 meg because they have a 100 meg Ethernet port. The Powerline Pro, you can go up to 600 meg. And keep in mind, these things are very, very similar to Wi-Fi APs because uh, even though they use a different frequency to transmit at, they basically use the same OFDM technology. They use the same uh, transmit and receive. You'll actually see data rates on all of your stations, etc., uh, to be able to take those and, and use them however you see fit. So, uh, definitely options that you can do uh, uh, that, you, that you need to do. So, uh, the Powerline Pros, the Powerline APs, uh, again, the APs are typically what we get. But the big mistake that we do get people th that uh, purchase them, uh, that they make, is they buy the power lines and then they want to use WAP ACs or something like that with them. Uh, but the unfortunate problem is those are not powered via micro USB uh, nor do they have a micro USB port, so you can't just plug them in, uh, which kind of kind of defeats the purpose. Uh, however, we do get to see lots of devices that are uh, like the WAP ACs, uh, the I'm sorry, the HAP AC squareds, and, and those types of units. Those units are really neat and nifty to uh, to do those uh, uh, with those power line USs because they'll actually be powered and they can uh, get that interface. So. Um, it's nifty, but uh, I, I prefer that Microtech would just come out with a Powerline WAP AC AP or something like that and uh, charge us a little bit more for them. Keep in mind, the Powerline APs are 42 bucks, so they're very rel relatively inexpensive, uh, but I'd rather pay you know, 69 or something like that and have 5 gigahertz in it as well.
Thank you for listening to ISP Radio. We hope you've gained new insights and additional wisdom in our industry as well as your business. Please remember to visit our show sponsors via the links on ISPRadio.com. If you're interested in becoming a show sponsor, contact us at sales at ISPRadio.com. Now go out there and push those packets as fast as you can. Good luck and Godspeed.